Member Sawyer, I just want to confirm that you're able to, uh, we can hear you. Yes, thank you. Perfect, thank you so much. Chair Oliveras, if you could um, just confirm that we're able to hear you, that would be wonderful. Yes, uh, I think I'm here and I will get my video started here shortly. Wonderful, thanks so much. Good morning, John. Good morning, Raquel. How are you? Good. Hey, Ernesto. How are you, man? I'm good. good.
Okay, I think we're I think we're ready to get started. Uh, no other will be coming on. Uh, Vice Mayor Fleming will hopefully be joining us at nine o'clock by audio. She's got some daycare issues to deal with. So let's go ahead and call the meeting to order. And with me today is uh, Council Member Sawyer. Uh, again, this is our second uh, Zoom uh, meeting for the downtown subcommittee. So I do need to uh, uh, remind you of, of the process here for us this morning. So again, due to the provisions of the governor's executive orders on the uh, N2520 and N2920, which suspends certain requirements of the Brown Act and the order of the human of, of the health officer, I'm sorry, the health officer from the county to shelter in place to minimize the spread of COVID-19, the downtown subcommittee will be conducting today's meeting in a virtual setting using Zoom webinar. Subcommittee members and staff are participating from remote locations and or practicing appropriate social distancing. Members of the public may view and listen to the meeting as noted on the city's website and as noted on the agenda. Members of the public wishing to speak during uh, item three, public comment, or during our public uh, hearing items will be able to do so by utilizing the raise hand feature of their, uh, of their uh, Zoom or pressing star nine on their phone and they will be given the ability to address a subcommittee. So, uh, do I have any announcements uh, for today? Uh, uh, Chair Alvarez, I just wanted to let you know that Council Member uh, Fleming will be uh, joining, or Vice Mayor Fleming will be joining shortly. Yes, she sent me a text that she would hopefully join us by nine o'clock. Oh, uh, she actually just sent a message to us once that you know she was about to join. Oh, okay, good, good, good. Thank you. That's great. That's great. Okay, so. Let's go ahead and uh, open up public comments on items not on today's agenda. So again, if you wish to make a, a comment via Zoom, please select the raise hand button. If you're dialing by phone, press, uh, I mean dial, I guess, we, I guess we've pressed, nobody dials, but star nine uh, to raise your hand. Each speaker will have three minutes, uh, but you know we're very informal here, so we'll do the best we can to accommodate everybody. And a countdown timer will appear for your convenience uh, and you will also be notified by telephone. So let's go ahead. Uh, anybody wishing to have uh, to make any public comment on items not on today's agenda? Chair Alvarez, we do not have any raised hands at this time. We do not. No, we don't. Okay, good. So uh, we'll move on to our normal <laughs> agenda. Then we'll begin with our new business with item four point one uh, permitted events and public art. Uh, Tara, you're on. <laughs> Hello, Chair Olivares and Councilmember Sawyer. Can you hear me? So, yes. <clears throat> thank you. Um, I'm Tara Thompson, the city's arts and culture uh, coordinator, and I am going to provide an update on uh, special event permits as well as public art. Um, since this last committee meeting, um, there has been a slight development. I think I shared that uh, working with um, city staff from a variety of departments that uh, would traditionally review all special event permits for Santa Rosa. Um, we have been working with, with that group to make a recommendation um, and have now made that recommendation and are moving forward with implementing it to suspend all special event permits through the end of 2020 at the least. Um, so we have now notified all of those uh, pending permit holders uh, that we are not able to issue permits through the end of 2020. Um, this is also in alignment with the County of Sonoma's suspension of special event permits indefinitely. So we are working with them to be kind of um, uh, consistent with our messaging out to events. Um, the other update re relates to Ironman. Um, it was determined through conversations with the county and the CHP that given the nature of our ongoing health orders and restrictions here in the county as well as in the state, um, that we would not be permitting the Ironman event in October as they were trying to um, move forward with that as their rescheduled date from both the May and July events. So we have now notified Ironman as well that we are not able to issue that permit and that there will not be an Ironman event in Santa Rosa this year. Um, that, that's really the special event uh, update that I have. I'm happy to answer any questions on that or I can move directly on to the public art update. John questions? Okay, let's go ahead and move on. Okay, so for public art, I wanted to share that um, the Courthouse Square public art project um, called Imagine Art in Courthouse Square was on hold, um, obviously during the first part of our um, shelter in place um, situation. 
um, but we restarted the project um, about a month ago. The delay has put us back about six months in, in um, kind of the total overall timeline. But where we are at today is the five finalists that were selected for the project have actually submitted their final proposals this week to us. So we are planning on putting those proposals up on our website next week and starting a public outreach campaign to solicit input from the general public on those five designs. Um, there will be an extensive kind of open review period for the general community to look at those, give us input, then a selection panel will meet and um, decide which one of those based on our selection criteria as well as the input from the community should, should be um, awarded the project. So, um, so over the next week or so, please go to srcity.org slash imagine art and you can see those five proposals and there'll be a way for you to give us your input. Um, <clears throat> we will be installing that final piece probably um, in early 2022. So that is our current timeline for that project. Um, I'm sure that Cadence, when she provides the Downtown Action Organization update, will share more about Open and Out, but I did want to share that the Art and Public Places Committee had previously allocated um, some funding towards temporary public art in the square in advance of the permanent piece going in. And last month they uh, approved allocating that funding towards the open and out program to increase the art budget for artistic installations throughout the open and out footprint, including in Courthouse Square. So that combined with some uh, grant funding that was secured uh, through Creative Sonoma, um, I believe the art budget is over $100,000 for a variety of art installations now as a part of that program. So uh, happy to answer any questions, but I'll leave, I'll leave it there. Thank you. Great. John? No, good. Thank you. Okay. Any, any members of the public uh, wishing to comment on uh, item 4.1? Chair Albert, there are no hands raised at this time. There are none. Okay, thank you. Then we'll move on to item 4.2, the downtown stationary specific plan. Amy uh, Lyle. Good morning. This is Amy Lyle, supervising planner with the advanced planning team. And I don't have a ton of stuff to update you on since uh, your last meeting, but for everyone's benefit, I'll just note that we are in the final months of the downtown specific plan in the planning process. And the plan was released on July 15th for a 45 day period of time with the environmental impact report. So those are out available for review. Um, we would love comments, we would love um, feedback, suggestions, uh, and we are doing a fair amount of outreach this month to neighborhoods, business owners, and um, a lot of the organizations that are prevalent downtown. So far, the comments have been very positive, but it is somewhat quiet, so we want to make sure in this virtual environment that we're doing the best robust outreach that we can. So the next step for us is um, the public hearing process. And the most notable is happening next week. So we do have a public hearing plan with the Planning Commission on the 13th, and that will be a public hearing on the environmental impact report. We also have a joint design review board, cultural heritage board meeting scheduled for the 19th, and then bike and pedestrian committee on the 20th. And then um, the final public hearing process will start in September. And then concluding with the um, city council, um, what we're hoping is in October. So that's the report I have. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, John, questions? No questions, thank you. Uh, and uh, Vice Mayor Fleming just joined us as well. And I'm not sure if you caught any of that. Uh, I did, Mayor, so I've been listening all questions. along, thank you. Thank I, you, I any don't questions? have any questions. I don't have any questions, I thank do appreciate the update. Thank you, thank you very much. Any members of the public wishing to comment on item 4.2? Chair Oliveras, we do not have any raised hands at this time. Thank you. Okay, let's move on to item 4.3, Downtown Action Organization. Cadence, welcome. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning, Carol Alvarez and Council Member Sawyer and Vice Mayor Fleming. Thank you for having us give you a quick update today. 
Um, I'm going to focus mainly on the open and out program as that's been the, the biggest thing happening downtown. Our Street Plus team is um, still working very hard doing their uh, regular activities as well as supporting open and out and our businesses now as they're kind of adapting to their new business models. Um, so I've been getting a lot of great feedback from our business owners around them and their support, which is great to hear. Uh, they're also continuing to engage with Catholic charities and the city around homeless issues uh, and, and trying to um, help support the, those experiencing homelessness downtown. So for Open and Out, I'll, I'll share some updates around where we are uh, with the program and then uh, talk about our survey and the responses we've been getting so far. So we were about four weeks in and uh, I think at our last meeting, we were just deciding whether or not to begin the program since we were on the verge of joining the watch list, but our restaurants overwhelmingly uh, wanted to move forward um, and some retailers as well. And um, so far uh, we've had an, a 12 or 13 parklets installed by uh, Bayside Church. That was a huge, uh, huge generous project they took on to support our downtown businesses and it's really made quite a difference for those who are operating outdoors. Um, we have a lighting project going in at JJ Way and that I think is happening or later this week or oh, sorry about some dark and parking dogs. Um, it's uh, going in early next week so we're excited about that and we're working to um, safely wrap the barricades and add a little more signage as well so that it becomes um, a little more festive. We've gotten quite a few comments on the orange barricades, so um, hopefully it'll be a little more fun, but still a safe traffic barrier and still allow access for uh, deliveries and, and street sweeping as it happens. As Tara mentioned, um, we have a very significant art budget. We have $100,000 to spend on temporary art and promoting that art. And uh, it's been, uh, we had a call for artists open for about a month and we received 51 applicants to join the artist pool, um, which is pretty exciting. We've gotten a lot of good feedback from the first two installations that have happened over the past two weeks. So we have a, a labyrinth on the a uh, block in front of Barnes and Noble. And we have a tiny gallery where artists can switch their art in and out. So if you're a member of the public, you can walk past the tiny gallery, which is located right between the florist and FedEx. And you can see different art every day. And if you're an artist, you can put something in there and have your art displayed. So it's a pretty fun uh, program that was sponsored by Creative Sonoma. We have another installation going in today in the window between Live and Beer Baron, and three more that are moving forward pretty quickly uh, with possibility for installation um, this weekend and starting next week. Um, timelines are a little bit rough at this point, but uh, we have, I think, five we've contracted with and three that are actively moving toward installation. And then it's looking like we'll probably have another 10 temporary works installed. So we're looking about 16 uh, visual pieces, uh, visual installations, uh, three to four community engagement pieces. So those will run the gamut from one weekend to a couple hours um, to an entire month of ways to kind of engage the community in discussion, engage the community in in art and um, should be really fun ways to kind of build build that sense of community that we've all been missing. And all of the projects we're still looking at them. Social distancing is, is the first thing that we're we're discussing. So we're only considering projects where that is possible. So it's it's exciting that we're creating these very safe opportunities for the community to connect with each other. We also have um, live musicians on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday night. So we've scheduled musicians from now and th uh, through the final weekend. We're scheduled to be uh, happening in October. And uh, they're not amplified, it's quiet music, so it's not drawing a crowd, but it's providing a really nice ambiance and we're getting good feedback on that as well. We will likely have some other ways um, 
some other performance type art, uh, but working through the logistics around that too to make sure that again, social distancing is possible as we're um, thinking about what we can offer the public. So we we committed, uh, or the city asked for us to do a, a biweekly survey of the businesses to make sure that this was supporting them as they're working through this really difficult time of um, restrictions and closures. And we've conducted our first survey uh, on July 24th, so our next one will open up tomorrow. Uh, and we had 23 of, I think, 35 or 36 businesses respond. About 50% have taken advantage of Open and Out, seen a positive benefit, and want the program to move forward. And then one quarter think it's too soon to tell, and one quarter are still not supportive of the program. So we'll, we'll keep an eye on the survey results. I know you're eager to see those as you determine how the program should operate, uh, but I'll continue to provide those. And if anyone is interested in seeing the uh, survey itself, I'm happy to, to share the um, summary response from that too. Our retailers, we still have a handful who are um, opposed to the program and want the streets to open. And we have some who kind of are acknowledging that there are other circumstances affecting their business, uh, like, for instance, the county's placement on the watch list, the age of their clientele, the price of their product during such an uncertain financial time. Um, but some definitely believe that the street closures are solely responsible for any drop in sales that they're experiencing. We know that the current circumstances are very challenging. So um, trying to work very closely with retailers on creative solutions to attract more customers and to take advantage of the foot traffic that's downtown. I think anyone who's been downtown over the past couple weeks has, has seen the increased foot traffic. You know, it's not overcrowded, but it, it's, it's lively, which is really nice to see. And we're trying to help some of our retailers figure out how they can um, tap into that a little bit more. Some are getting creative on their own to attract customers, and I love that. Um, I'll use a quick example of a Kindred. I don't know if anyone has been down to Kindred in the last couple Sundays, but they're doing Safari Sundays and had a lot of fun with that. People are loving the live animals, and um, I think it's been helping Julie's sales there as well. So kind of love that creative attitude and, and wanting to take advantage of the opportunity that's being uh, put before them. So that's, that's a fun one to share. But we're also talking with um, others who felt that their sales have gone up since the street closure. You know, boutiques uh, located close to restaurants are definitely taking advantage of those eating at restaurants or those waiting to eat at restaurants. We're getting a lot of feedback that there are long, long waits to eat, which is not surprising, um, but it's nice that we have shops that are open to essentially entertain people as they are waiting to um, waiting to dine. So um, we, there's still others we, we really want to continue to work with, but we're definitely making progress on the retail side. Um, and I'm, I'm excited about that because it's definitely a big challenge. Our restaurants, um, by and large, very positive comments from a number of restaurant owners. Uh, some are, are still just getting up and running or have only been up and running for a couple days at this point. So they're tr trying to figure out how to make it work uh, and support their staff and, and stay open and stay open different hours and different days and seeing a lot of flexibility from our business owners right now, which is great. Um, one, one comment I did get from a restaurant owner that I wanted to share is she said that they're experiencing one and a half to two hour wait times for outdoor tables and still doing a ton of takeout business. The forced street closure has ended up being a lifesaver for both us and our employees. Without it, we would end up laying off an additional six to 10 employees. So I mean, that's, that's great. It's not the only person who shares that Hi, type of you? information. Cool. Sorry, what? Oh, I was just asking if I could post the picture of Xavier on Facebook. Oh. Um, so we're, we're, getting, we're, we're getting very good feedback from the restaurants. Um, by and large, very happy with how it's operating and how they're able to keep going during, um, during the current situation. And then members of the public as well. So, you know, we operate a couple downtown Santa Rosa social media accounts. 
and we're getting uh, really good feedback there. Lots of people making comments like, it should always be like this and this art is great. So even though we only have two pieces installed, um, people are loving it. And so it's very fun to see that kind of positivity and interaction coming through uh, online right now. And I did uh, want to say really quickly, that this is a, a really collaborative effort between a lot of different groups. Um, and, you know, I know it was the, the city's idea and creativity to kind of push this forward uh, and the um, the support across all city departments has been really fantastic. So I just want to say thank you for that as, as I'm kind of helping to navigate the needs of our business owners. Um, the city's been very responsive to helping with moving things around and uh, adjusting to accommodate the businesses that are, um, you know, trying to trying to stay alive. So I just want to say thank you to all the city staff for um, their support and help around that. Any questions for me? Uh, no, Kate, I just want to uh, extend my appreciation for your work and uh, helping to make this happen. Again, we had made, we made a tough decision last time. We, I think it was a good decision. Uh, you know, anticipating not really not what was going to happen as far as the watch list. We were put on the watch list of that. I think there was an impact there, but in spite of all that, I have been downtown and taken advantage of what's going on down there. And I love seeing the people coming down there. So thank you for that. Uh, a quick question. What, what, are, what are your streets uh, plus team uh, reporting out related to uh, the social distancing use of masks or are, are there, you know, as far as the public coming downtown, how's that going? Yeah, they, they feel like it's been um, it's been going well. You know, they love seeing people down there, and I think it was quiet for them for a long time. So they're getting a lot of interaction now. Um, definitely seeing a lot of mask wearing. You know, at, at restaurants, people don't wear masks, and I think right. that concerns some people. But the reality is, you can't. Yeah. Um, so it so far, I think it's the social distancing aspects have have seemed to be going well. Good. Good. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Sawyer, uh, Vice Mayor Fleming, questions? Yes, I do. I do have a, a question. First of all, a comment. Thank you very much, Candace, for everything you're doing. You've, you've got a lot of pokers in the fire. Um, but I, I, it's, I appreciate you, your awareness of the the need for not only the fiscal health of the businesses downtown, and, and we can't, unfortunately, um, we knew there would be some uh, some fallout from, from the decision to close the street, but uh, it sounds like it is, for the, for the most part, had been a, a successful um, experiment in a way that was forced upon us, but I think we've learned some things about how our downtown functions uh, under situations like this, and I, while at the same time protecting the, the health of the customers, so I really appreciate that. Uh, my my question um, is just a is a request that you reiterate the website or the the um, on our on the city's website um, the Imagine Art um, access. What is the? Could you repeat that? And either if you don't know it, Candice or Tara could weigh in. But I, I just would like you to repeat that that website address so that people can weigh in on those five. Um, uh, installations or five possible, the, the, the installation that we're looking at for the future. Sure, I can provide that. This is Tara Thompson again. Um, so the website is srcity.org slash imagine art. Thank you. And uh, wait, give us until next week um, to update that with the five proposals. Thank okay. you. Okay, great. Vice Mayor? Um, <clears throat> Thank you so much for all that you're doing, and my questions have already been answered. I'm just really excited to hear about how um, it's helping our businesses downtown and um, look forward to uh, seeing more of the art come in. So thanks again. Thank you. Do we have uh, any questions from members of the public? Uh, yes, we do. Um, hold on just one moment. Thank you. And um, Mr. Fraser, I'm going to unmute you. If you would like to introduce yourself, you were able to speak at this time. Are you able to see the timer on the screen? Uh, yes, I am. Please go okay. ahead. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, Eric Frazier, uh, just in the adjacent neighborhood. So before I begin, I would like to say that, of course, my observations are my opinion. And while we have research uh, that buttresses our opinion, uh, they are our opinion. So on the one hand, yeah, we love seeing the economic vitality of downtown. We want to do everything that we can to help businesses survive these very difficult times. Uh, our, we have two concerns. One is that uh, there seems to be business owners that don't feel the same way that this was in their best interest to proceed. And one thing that we've noticed uh, with uh, activities that are sponsored uh, by the chamber and the DAO, as well as the city, is sometimes the minority voices really get rolled over and they don't really take into consideration what other people are saying. Uh, we've seen situations, of course, where the city will come forward with a predetermined uh, outcome or agenda and ask public involvement, uh, knowing that it's a foregone conclusion. And so people in the minority or people that have other information that might be important uh, tend to be excluded right from the beginning purposely. And that's not fair and that's not right. And so I hope you guys double down when people have alternative points of view to take them to heart and to consideration. Secondly, well, again, we enjoy the massive amount of activity downtown at the restaurants in the evening. Something about it feels unsafe. The way that this is set up doesn't allow for safe distancing between the people that are congregated on the other side of the pallets to enjoy their meals outside without masks and those that are just walking down the street or waiting for a table or, or whatever the case may be. In fact, the ingress into the areas seems to be not properly situated for people that are in walkers or uh, have some sort of disability or so on and so forth. And so um, our question certainly would be whether the, uh, the layout of this and the precautions and everything that goes into it uh, are really coordinated with the county over their concerns about a pandemic that still is not in control in our county. And so while we can celebrate the party downtown, we certainly don't want to ignore the fact that there may be splash over uh, to citizens in general, adjacent citizens, people that are just enjoying the town, downtown as pedestrians, and that doesn't feel right. That doesn't seem right. So. Appreciate your enthusiasm. We want healthy businesses, nothing wrong. But I would say that you have a commitment to the public to double down on the public health aspects of this. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Thank you, Mr. Frazier. Any, any? We have no further hands raised at this time. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Sawyer, Vice uh, Mayor Fleming, any additional comments? No, thank you. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you. We'll move on to item 4.4, .4, Railroad Square Association Community Benefit District. Uh, Rafael. Yes, uh, buenos dias, Council Member Olivares, Council Member Sawyer, Vice Mayor Fleming. Uh, great to see your names and faces. <laughs> Um, so I have a brief update regarding the Railroad Square Association. Um, I wanted to let you know that uh, on August 12th, um, the city will facilitate a brown act training to their newly created board. So they're looking forward to that. And um, I reported back in at the previous meeting we held uh, that they had been uh, the hiring of a security company for Railroad Square. Uh, this is just happening in the evening or, or at night. Um, there were a couple of break-ins in early July. So what I plan to do is uh, get uh, more of information regarding what the activities are uh, from this security company and then come and report here at this uh, downtown subcommittee. Uh, the board held a, a meeting on July 16th. And at that meeting, uh, there were discussions regarding uh, day, daytime maintenance uh, crew uh, consideration for uh, a group to be hired to provide the maintenance and cleanup in addition to what the city provides. A uh, couple of um, uh, entities that they're looking at are becoming independent, Redwood Gospel Mission, and a few others. 
There's also uh, an interest in hiring a daytime uh, security company as well. And I don't know if it'll be the same one that provides the security in the evening. Uh, there was also a discussion regarding the place, replacement of the old banners that have been there for many years. So uh, coming up with uh, a, a new, new, new banner, so a total of 22 or 25 or something like that. I conducted a survey of banners given that uh, that's been a little side project that I've uh, coordinated uh, these past couple of months. Um, and then there's also, there was also a discussion about hiring a part-time uh, community benefit district coordinator. Um, they it would be ideal to uh, also secure the office space, uh, most likely at the visitor center. However, the visitor center continues to be closed. Uh, so they're having discussions on where uh, this individual uh, could be uh, uh, working at work perhaps if um, um, the person will do the work remotely uh, during this current time. Uh, there were some uh, breakout sessions in terms of, uh, or assignation of, uh, uh, assignment of uh, various committees that will concentrate on beautification, marketing, um, and his, the historic uh, self-guided tour. So um, there's some further discussions related to that as well. And uh, the graffiti continues to be addressed. Uh, there was some graffiti um, um, that appear on various buildings uh, during the month of June. Some of that was removed by the city. Uh, it, uh, more graffiti in July. Uh, this was uh, some private properties. Uh, some of these owner, property owners are having difficulties already with removing the graffiti. So uh, I, I reached out to a group uh, the junior college um, got uh, some support from Akiwani's uh, key club. Uh, they decided to come help. Uh, so I drove over to the yard, uh, got some supplies, some equipment, and then we tackled uh, graffiti removal last Wednesday. Uh, we spent a couple of hours um, over at the warehouse on West Third, uh, the Arlene Francis Center, um, Mary's Pizza, uh, uh, gave us some gift cards to feed the kids or, or the youth, I mean, or the students actually. Uh, they're not necessarily kids. Um, and we accomplished a lot. Uh, we beautified the area. So the Rebel Square Association was very pleased with this outcome. And just, you know, this is how we're doing things. Uh, just thinking out of the box and being creative and putting a little effort here and there to continue to alleviate the, uh, the burden of uh, the current situation. Uh, lastly, uh, at the last meeting, I reported that the AC Marriott was uh, uh, slated to open at the end of July. That date has changed. Uh, however, our planning department has given a temporary occupancy uh, permit to the Marriott to begin occupation on August 13th. So that will be happening in the next couple of days or so. So we're excited for that, looking forward to it. The, the hotel looks beautiful. And again, we're going to continue moving forward. And the last item I have is uh, there are six park parklets uh, in Rebel Square. So there is some discussion about the possibility of closing that section of 4th Street or maybe uh, perhaps considering going back to the concept that was presented uh, at some of our previous meetings. And that would be uh, some sort of a closure around the depot park, making that some sort of a temporary, temporary plaza, calling it a piazza or whatnot and then uh, just providing an opportunity for people to come out and uh, in a safely manner and with social distancing, distancing to, to come out and uh, enjoy the park uh, and, and the area as well. So that is my report. That's it, okay, thank, thank you, Rafael. And I don't wanna sidetrack you, but you also been doing some work out there related to uh, the census as well. Uh, yes, uh, yes, so uh, definitely. We wanted to definitely do a drive-through through, through um, a, a drive-through by the hotels uh, that are in the area. So I teamed up with um, uh, various organizations, Community Action Partnership, Santa Rosa Tourism uh, Bureau, and the census, the U.S. Census. And I think I saw you too uh, during that caravan. So in addition to downtown, we headed out to uh, Apple Valley, went through Cutting Town. There were at least 30 vehicles caravan signs and just reminding people to uh, fill out their uh, fill out their census very very important but we definitely wanted to target us those uh, employees that work in the hotel industry as well uh, that they need to be counted 
So thank you for your thank money. You. Thank you. Uh, Vice Mayor Fleming or Council Member Sawyer, questions? No, no questions. For me, just great work. Thanks for the report. Good report, Mayor Fallon. Thanks for all, for all your work. Thank you. Any uh, questions for members of the public? Yes, we do. Mr. Frazier, hold on just one moment, please. And Mr. Frazier, are you able to see the timer? Uh, yes, I am. Please proceed. Okay, thank you. Uh, this is just a brief comment. This is Eric Frazier again in the adjacent neighborhood. Uh, we're uh, busy working uh, to understand the county, the CDC's role in acquiring hotels for their um, homelessness assistance programs. Uh, there's a, I don't remember the name of the program, but it's funded by the state, some emergency money to purchase hotels. And my question is whether or not rumor is true that there's been an offer to buy the Marriott, the new Marriott for that program. And I know there's a couple, uh, there's at least one downtown hotel that's in the pipeline, uh, the Azura. Uh, and um, I wasn't sure if the rumor was true that the Marriott was also being considered. Thank you. That's all my comments. Thank you, Mr. Frazier. Thank you. Any other comments? No, there are no additional hands raised at this time. Thank you. And I, I, I'm sorry, I, I, I can't help, handle your rumors. I really don't know. Uh, I don't have any information for you. Uh, so we'll move on to our parking program, uh, Kim Nadeau. Good morning, this is Kim Nadeau, parking manager. Nice to be speaking with you today. I have just a brief update. We are quite um, involved in the installation of our new parks equipment in the garages. That's the uh, computer gated revenue control system for the garages, which the system we have right now is 20 years old and we're um, just crossing our fingers every day that it keeps working. So we're really excited about getting this new equipment. Uh, the, it's been ordered, it's in configuration stage right now, and we hope to begin the installation uh, end of September, beginning of October. So I'll have further updates for you at um, future meetings. So we've completed our, our first month of uh, the resumption of paid parking, which uh, resumed on July 1st. Our uh, revenue for the month of, G of July is uh, down 50% from the year prior, which is much better than we expected um, as, as we were trying to project what the recovery was going to look like. Um, particularly taking into consideration that we're offering free parking in the garages on weekends, free parking in the garages uh, in the evenings, offering the first hour free in all of the garages, and we lowered the rate in the value zone to 75 cents an hour. So having that 50% um, reduction in revenue is actually much better than I had hoped for. And I think it is a testament to the fact that people are coming downtown and um, you know, visiting businesses. So I found that to be encouraging. And then the last thing I wanted to do was just put out a reminder that we do have a promotion uh, offering one free validated metered parking session when using the Passport app. Um, so people can, it would be for their first use of the app uh, for one time session and it has a value of $3.15. So that would get you two hours in the premium zone or four hours in the value zone. And the uh, validation code that you would enter when using the Passport app is Park SR. So um, I just wanna, every chance we get, we wanna to try to get that word out um, because we haven't seen very much utilization of that. We've been promoting it with social media on the city's web pages. We, we worked with um, Adrian and her team to have rack cards made with promotional information. And so we're distributing those to the extent possible. So just wanted to reiterate and get the word out that we're excited about that um, promotion, which allows people to park at a meter and not have to touch a meter, which we thought would be something that folks would be interested in. And that's all I've got. Happy to answer any questions you might have. Great, how's the utilization going of our garages downtown? Um, it's still low, but it's, it's okay. <laughs> you know, I mean, it, I think, I haven't really, to be perfectly honest, I haven't been able to drill down yet into the, the um, success of the first hour free. And we don't have data for the weekends because we've raised the gates. 
-hmm. So we don't, you know, I have staff who are, who are visually doing estimates of, of occupancy, but we don't have hard data because we, we raised the gates. So we have some gaps in our, in our uh, occupancy, but the, I, I would say better than expected. Good, good. Vice Mayor Fleming, uh, Council Member Sawyer. No questions, thanks, Kim. No questions as well, thank you. Thank you, members of the public wishing to comment or have a question. Eileen, do we have comment? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, Eric Frazier again in the adjacent neighborhood. Thank you for taking the time to listen to our opinions. During the last planning session, we submitted the idea that the parking department needs some reform. We see that they're already stepping towards the idea that the parking structures should be free of charge to the motoring public to use within the time limit constraints. And in fact, the metered parking, the paid parking scheme that the city has subjected the mostly the residents of the city of Santa Rosa to, we find to be structurally deficient. One thing that's never mentioned in these conversations about paid parking is the enforcement aspect. And we see that the enforcement aspect of the parking department, which isn't, um, uh, the facts aren't presented in the reports, but we see that as a, as a money-making profit center for the city. I know that uh, uh, Ms. Nadu may quibble with that, but our research is our research. Certainly that doesn't apply to this pro-COVID era, uh, but just the same, the, idea of paid parking in a parking zone that has such low usage that basically subjects mostly residents to enforcement is way out of hand. And it also is a retardant to business. Uh, during this COVID period, we feel that this is a good opportunity to reset some of these defective structures that the city supports and parking being one of them. Uh, I don't know. Were my comments listened to? I think the timer was screwed up here. Uh, I'm not sure if you're following my thoughts. Can somebody tell me if I'm? Yes, uh, yes, continue, please. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> so, uh, so there is this issue. And whether, you know, you're encouraging people to use an app on their phone, you know, most of the citizens in Santa Rosa that want to come downtown are not 20-somethings or 30-somethings. A lot of them are, no question about it. But the tremendous number of people that hold a grudge against parking in downtown Santa Rosa throughout the county uh, are average age 50, I would guess. And, and that's just a guess, that's not a research point of view. But I would say that you need to have a comprehensive look at your parking and remove those barriers, not only from uh, public perception, but those things that are systemic that expose our residents to outrageous enforcement costs. And uh, in, hand in hand with that, our recommendation was also to provide amnesty for anybody who has an outstanding ticket regarding expired meters. Uh, and furthermore, we would expect that uh, you would continue to enforce the time allotment in a zone, uh, whether it's 15 minutes, 20 minutes, an hour, two hours, three hours, uh, outside of the use of meters and this paid parking scheme, which is, um, uh, a tremendous burden to the public. I think I've used my time up. Thank you very much. Uh, that's what I had to say. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. There Do we have other hands raised? There are no additional hands raised at this time. Thank you very much. Let's move on to public safety. Uh, Sergeant Wolf. Good morning, John Wolf from the Center of the Police Department. Can you hear me all right? Hello, Sergeant Wolf. It's difficult to hear you. It is. Okay. okay. Uh, is this any better? No. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure if there's anything I can change to be heard better. Is it? No, it's, it's not any better, Sergeant. Why don't you try to, uh, 
wanted to try to fix that up and we'll move on to the next item. We'll come back to you if that's okay. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's go to maintenance of Courthouse Square, or a Dean. Um, uh, Chair O'Hara's, um, yes. not been able to join just yet, but Kelly Kuypendale is on the phone or on the call. Perfect. That's perfect. Let's take Kelly. Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Good morning. Yes, thank yes, you. Yes, Kelly, thank you. Okay, good. Um, so yeah, Kelly Kuykendall with Housing and Community Services. I'm the city's homeless service manager and I'm going to give a brief update on what the city's been doing around homelessness and we've been very busy, I think, as you all know, but there's three key areas that I'm going to give an update on just sort of our general response to homelessness during COVID-19. Uh, we had a July 7th study session at City Council, provide an update on that and then um, a topic of interest for everybody, I think, on the call would be the homeless encampment at Fremont Park. So jumping right into our homeless response during COVID-19, like I said, we've been very busy. Um, we have a lot of information up on our website. I want to point you in that direction. It's srcity.org slash COVID-19 homeless support. Uh, but just to highlight some of the things that we've been doing since um, you know, in response to COVID and homelessness, we've provided sanitary facilities. We worked with the county to provide portable and toilet, portable toilets and hand washing stations throughout Sonoma County and uh, Santa Rosa. We've also provided hotel rooms for our most at risk sheltered and unsheltered individuals. Um, those that are 65 years and older or who have existing um, health conditions that put them most at risk of COVID-19. We op opened a managed camp at the Finley Community Center. That's our safe social distancing program for people living in encampments. And then um, we've also been very busy with encampments throughout the city, as you know, at Doyle Park um, in the downtown area, the 101 underpass on College Avenue, at Corporate Center Parkway, and now at Fremont. So the next item to update you on is uh, our study session that staff provided to City Council on July 7th. We provided an overview of our existing programs, um, our COVID response, which I just talked about, some new programming ideas, including um, an expanded safe parking program for individuals living in RVs and vehicles. And we discussed work plan priorities, so tier one and tier two priorities. And as many as, as many of you probably know on this call, um, council earlier this week uh, set their council goals and homelessness remains one of their top priorities. So staff will be revisiting our work plan priorities that were discussed with city council on July 7th. I can tell you right now our current focus is, as I mentioned, on our COVID response and that includes uh, a lot of work going into encampments. Um, also restoring our shelter bed capacity at Sam Jones Hall. We lost about 50 beds at the shelter due to uh, social distancing requirements. So we're currently working to restore that capacity and we're looking at putting up a prefab structure, something like a sprung structure in the parking lot at Sam Jones Hall. Um, I believe that design build contract is going to council on August 18th. And we're hoping to restore capacity at the shelter so that we can ramp down some of the programs that we've implemented in response to COVID-19. So that includes some of the hotel rooms that we're currently using and the program that we've set up at the Finley Community Center. And lastly, uh, Fremont, I was hoping that Sergeant Wolf would be able to provide an, a public safety update on that, but I understand he's um, having some issues, some technical issues, so I'll do my best to, to do that. Um, many of you know, and an update went out in our City Connections newsletter last week that the city uh, took uh, action to address the fire threat and hazards um, on the eastern section, um, sorry, the western side of Fremont Park. Um, our fire department did a fire assessment and determined that we needed to take immediate action. So that happened last week and notice was provided to the individuals and host was out there to engage people. Um, a number of them came into services and as you know, a number of them decided to relocate to the eastern side of the park. Um, so we are working on that right now. Um, host will continue to con uh, engage those individuals. Um, in the interim, we've provided additional sanitary facilities, so two additional portable toilets and a hand washing station and a debris box there to try and um, 
provide access to sanitary facilities for the individuals in the park and mitigate some of the impacts to the surrounding area. So where we're at with that, we'll be evaluating and monitoring um, that particular camp um, at Fremont Park over the next couple weeks um, and developing a plan to resolve that encampment. I anticipate we'll have um, you know, ongoing updates about that. Um, and those typically come out via our City Connections newsletter, which, which happens every Thursday. Um, let me see, just want to touch briefly on some of the challenges that we're faced with in, address, in addressing encampments right now. So pre-COVID, um, many of you know that the city was involved with the county in a lawsuit for efforts to resolve encampments along the Joe Rodota Trail. This is going back a few years. Um, as a result of that lawsuit, we're in the middle of a preliminary injunction and that requires the city to take certain steps prior to clearing an encampment. Um, one of the key factors is that we have to have enough shelter capacity before we ask people to move along. And there are other requirements as well, like noticing storage of personal belongings and accommodating any disabilities. Um, right now, we're faced with uh, limited shelter capacity due to COVID. Also, we have to balance our response with guidance coming out from the CDC regarding you know, how to address encampments in the middle of a pandemic, as well as our health officer orders and then also evaluating health and safety concerns within the camps and uh, you know, managing impacts to the surrounding community. So there's a lot we have to balance in our encampment response and it is very challenging for us um, to address it. And I also understand very challenging for our neighbors um, around the camps, businesses around the camps, as well as people living in the camp. So I think that I've provided enough of an update to take any questions. Again, just want to highlight that we are pushing out a lot of information about our efforts on our website, and that's srcity.org slash COVID-19 homeless support. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Vice Mayor Flamer, do you have any questions? I do not. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Sawyer. No, thank you. Thanks for the report. Thank you. I have none. Uh, any members of the public wish to comment on this item? No, oh, there is. Um, there are no hands raised. However, I did want to let you know um, that Sergeant Wolf um, should be able to provide an update at this time. Thank you. Let's go ahead and move on to item four point six with public safety. And Sergeant Wolf, if you would unmute, there we go. There we go. Uh, so again, Sergeant Wolf from Santa Rosa Department. Can you hear me uh, better now? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Good. I apologize for the technical difficulties. Um, so just to cover a few things. Um, Obviously the underpasses have been cleared. We're maintaining an eye on that. Uh, because of the location, we still periodically have one or two people hanging out, but since uh, it was cleared, it has remained relatively clear. Um, Fremont Park and the Prince Memorial Greenway are continuing to be areas of concern. I think Kelly uh, handled pretty much everything for Fremont. The Greenway, uh, I know I've talked about this at a lot of other meetings. Uh, last Friday, we went out with Freaks and what was supposed to be just a portion of the day. We spent the entire day there. Significant amounts of trash were removed. Um, it's an ongoing struggle there, but trying to stay on top of that as well. Um, in the downtown corridor, as uh, Reach Plus people could attest to, we're having some issues with just a handful of people with some pretty severe mental health concerns. Uh, I've brought them to the attention of Project Hope, and it won't be an immediate, it won't be an immediate solution. But we're going to be working with uh, a number of nonprofits and other services to try and get that a better place and hanging out downtown. Are there any questions? Yeah, any other uh, activity types in the downtown area since we've started with the park list and everything downtown? I'm sorry, since we started with what? With, with, with the closure of 4th Street and the park list downtown, how's, how's the level of activity for you guys? Um, it, it's, it's sporadic. There aren't many consistent problems. Um, some of the people I've discussed that fall into the mental health category, unfortunately, have been relieving themselves at inappropriate places at different downtown locations sometimes including in front of the businesses um, we do run into some issues as well where people are more difficult simply because the jail population has been reduced and most of the crimes we're enforcing in the downtown area are considered no bail now which means if we when we do book people they're 
within about two to three hours. So it is possible and we have had times where we um, arrest someone two or three times in the same day and we see them back downtown. Um, like I said, it's sporadic. There are some days where it's better and some days where it's worse. Thank you. Vice Mayor Fleming? Uh, thank you for the update. I don't have any questions. Thank you. Mr. Sawyer? I don't have any questions. I appreciate uh, and feel for you the, the challenges of dealing with the restrictions that you that you are currently facing as far as uh, dealing with those individuals that are um, experiencing uh, mental health issues. It's, it must be very challenging for you and I'm, I'm pleased that you're getting a hold of the organizations that can help you deal with that. And uh, I'm looking for uh, a, uh, a, quick, a speedy, uh, uh, not necessarily solution, but a reduction in, in those challenges. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any members of the public have questions on, on this item? Uh, yes, there is one more member, Mr. Frazier. Hold on just one moment, please. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? Yes. Thanks. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. So, uh, yes, thank you very much to the Santa Rosa Police Department for um, uh, the interface with the homeless and mentally challenged population that are on our streets. Uh, there's been a discussion for quite some time about whether the SRPD is the appropriate agency to handle those types of calls. And so I know at the public safety subcommittee meeting coming up later this week that there will be some part of a discussion about that. My concern is that when we look at the issue, one of the things that really stands out is that the data that we're getting from the SRPD is not reliable, it's just not dependable. And I'm, we're not sure why that is, whether it's confusion over uh, a call into the SRPD from a citizen uh, is considered a call or not in the call reports. Uh, in other words, they may be describing a call that an officer makes to an issue or to a person or to a situation. Uh, the, the data is a mess and the chief says the data is a mess. And so we know anecdotally that the impacts of uh, homeless individuals and criminally minded and perpetually uh, criminal people on the streets as well as the mentally or drug influenced people is problematic. But I'm hoping that there will be a um, uh, pressure applied to the system to be sure that the data sets that emerge in these discussions are dependable. And so that is certainly a concern. One of the other issues that was brought up by our neighborhood is that the, if you were to read next door, you would see that there was been um, a handful of people that have been uh, victims of property crimes bikes being stolen or camping gear or people going into their garages or uh, possibly even their homes and also auto crime. And they're able to trace it effectively by seeing those um, their goods basically uh, in the encampment uh, at Cancer Survivors Park. And so uh, my question for the SRPD so I can convey it to my neighbors is what should they do? Should they go and confront people. I know in this day of COVID, it's very risky, but people who have their bikes ripped off and then they see their bike within a homeless population, how should they engage? And um, that's a big concern because we, we have seen, like I said, a handful of those happen already, um, not necessarily within the last couple of days, but over the past several weeks, certainly. And so uh, that would be our question. We want to keep everybody safe. And again, I appreciate the, uh, the opportunity to be part of the solution, a comprehensive solution. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. And any other hands raised? No, not at this time. Thank you. And I would ask you, Mr. Frazier, to advise your neighbors to do what we've always done, even before COVID, is that if they see their stolen property, call the police and have them handle it. Uh, is Mr. Uh, Hamlet on the on the line now? He is not. Okay. So we have no other items on our on our agenda for today. Uh, so I want to thank everybody for their participation today. 
uh, good reports, and we look forward to seeing you all again next month. Okay, meeting adjourned. Thank you.